I was really fascinated by uh, your comments regarding um, uh, the underlying T cell variation or um, uh, changes uh, for patients who had, or in, in those lymph nodes who uh, you identified extra nodal extension, that these were exhausted T cells. Can you elaborate a little bit on that and what you think is behind that? Is this a is it an inherent um, uh, challenge to the immune response or what, what's at play here, do you think? Yeah, I, I think the simple answer, Mark, is that again, these really big, we've even shown it with lymph node size, these really big lymph nodes and extranodal extension, which we know from work Mike and other people have done is those are risk factors for having, you know, higher level of recurrence, kind of more aggressive disease. Um, what we tend to find is you have more PD-1 positive CD8 cytotoxic T cells and CD4 helper T cells. Um, so there definitely seems to be a correlation there. What we have to be careful about is just having PD-1 doesn't mean it's exhausted. Because again, that's an early activation marker as well. So that's where Jenna's trying to go back and look at things like proliferation, KI-67, to see which of these cells truly are exhausted. You can look at interferons and interleukins in the microenvironment to say, is this an exhausted microenvironment? So it's a PD-1 is a crude measure of what could be exhausted T cells. But I do believe there's a, this, you know, in, in other words, I think there's an association between the exhausted T cells and that, because you think about that lymph node, it's like, you're, it's like, um, uh, you know, going into a castle, you know, you put yourself in a Trojan horse, go into a castle, and then you got all these people in the castle who could kill you, and somehow you've convinced them to leave you alone. Um, and that's kind of what's happening, I think, in that lymph node. Do we know the mechanisms yet? No. Um, but we can definitely study that.